Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This is Jim here. Uh, this is going to be my very first YouTube video and my very first painting tutorial, so please be kind. Uh, today we're going to be painting Soul Drinker Space Marines. Soul Drinkers are a chapter that has had a ton of meaning for me ever since I read the books by Ben Counter as a kid. Um, so when I decided to do a new 40k Space Marine army, of course I had to do Soul Drinker. Now why did I decide to do Soul Drinkers? Well, in general, there's three main factors that I love about the Soul Drinkers. First, purple. I love the color purple. It's my favorite color to paint. Um, I've done a ton of other armies in purple and I just love painting purple. Second, well, they get to uh, have a little bit of chaos influence thanks to the fact that they have a little bit of history with the chaos god Zinch. So that allows me to incorporate a lot of little chaos bits in my army. So that was something that I definitely like to do. And third, uh, because of the fact that their gene seed is of unknown founding, I basically am able to play them as whatever chapter I want. So from a competitive standpoint, I can play them as Ultramarines, I can play them as Imperial Fists, Iron Hands, whatever I want. Um, so those are kind of the main three reasons I love the Soul Drinkers. Plus, they're still getting new books. Uh, a new book just came out quite recently by Ben Counter. So if you haven't checked out the Soul, Br Soul Drinkers books, make sure you check them out. It's a great series. A little bit uh, dated at this point, given the fact that like a lot of the stuff they do is kind of crazy. Um, lots of chaos mutations and stuff. And they are led by the famous chapter master Sarpedion, who's actually a mutated chaos space marine with eight spider legs, if you can believe it or not. So hopefully you guys enjoy the video. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. So for today's video, we're going to be painting a Space Marine Eradicator. Uh, now I've gone ahead and primed the model with Pro Acryl's Black Primer. This is a really nice matte primer and just goes straight through your airbrush. Normally I would keep the head separate and I would also glue a shoulder pad symbol on, but today I've foregone those steps just to make it a little bit easier. Um, and the shoulder pad provides a great area to kind of demonstrate blending. So our first step is going to be to base coat the model. And for this, we're going to use a 3 to 1 mix of Vallejo Airbrush Flow Improver and Phoenician Purple. The key step here is to just make sure we're doing lots of nice passes, really, really thin coats, and we're going to keep rotating the model as we go. So make sure you don't do too heavy of a coat here, otherwise you could obscure some detail. Take your time here, make sure you right underneath. Uh, you don't want the paint to be too thick here. Really, it's about getting a nice solid base coat. So I've sped up the video in this section just to make it a little bit easier and just so you guys don't have to watch an hour long painting video. So feel free to skip ahead to the next section or if you want, just sit back and relax. Alright, now that our primer is all dried, we're going to move on to the first highlight. So for this part, we've got a 50-50 mix of Phoenician Purple and Jean Slayer Purple. Make sure you're adding a little bit more airbrush thinner every time you add paint. This will ensure nice, consistent consistency in your paint, which is really one of the keys when it comes to airbrushing. Nice, thin paint. And obviously, as you add paint, if you don't counteract that with a little bit of thinner, your paint's going to get thicker and thicker, which is not what we want. We wanna make sure that the paint stays nice and thin. That way, the translucency of the paint is gonna help us in our blends, which is really, really important and key to airbrushing. So we're gonna very carefully work our way around the model, doing it kind of from a 45 degree angle from the top and just thin, thin glazing, making sure that we're leaving a little bit of that original base coat under, but not going too heavy. We don't wanna completely cover up the color underneath and we wanna let the translucency of the paint do a lot of the work. So continue this step, make sure to do, again, lots of thin coats, continue to move your model, and just like the last section, we're gonna speed up the rest of this section, but feel free to sit back and relax. All right, so now we're moving into pure Jean Sitter Purple. Now you'll notice in my airbrush that I've dumped out the previous color, but I didn't do a full cleaning job and I've left a little bit of the previous color. To this, I'm gonna add a little bit of medium, and I'm gonna add a little bit of my Jean Sear Purple. 
Now by leaving some of this old color in the paint, it's gonna help kind of blend those colors together. Making sure here that we keep the paint nice and thin. So again, it's gonna be about a three to four to one ratio of thinner to paint. And obviously some paints are a little bit thicker than others, even when they're fresh out of the pot. So you have to use your judgment here and it's definitely gonna come with experience. But if you need to just test a little bit on your paper, or on another part of the model just to make sure that it's a nice thickness. You'll also notice that I did a little bit of backflow and this will help me mix the paint and make sure that it's nice and smooth. As you notice, I did a little test spray just to make sure that I'm happy with the opacity and here we go. So same thing, we're gonna be doing most of the painting from kind of a top down angle, making sure to get the top of the greaves, the top of the shoulder pads, kind of the tops of all the rounded areas where the light might hit the most. You'll notice again that I'm able to use the airbrush really close to the model and able to get really nice and precise detail. Again, this comes down to the relationship between distance, thickness of your paint, and air pressure. So the closer I get, the lower my pressure needs to be and the thinner my paint needs to be. So the distance really dictates how my paint needs to be formulated. And you're probably wondering why I need to get so close. Well, as I'll show you later in this video, Getting closer with your airbrush allows you to have much better control. It lets you highlight very small areas, almost like pinpoint areas. And so when you're doing high level airbrush highlighting, you wanna be able to bring your brush as close to the model as possible. So with really thin paint and really low pressure, you get a lot of control. And you can bring your brush right up to the model and do really, really small areas without overspraying. And that's really, really important to understand so if you're struggling with airbrushing where you think it's just too random, too chaotic, and you can't really get to the areas that you want without overspraying, try lowering your pressure, making your paint more thin, and bringing your brush a lot closer. All right, so now we're doing our final spray highlight, and this is gonna be a 50-50 mix of Jean Sear Purple and Pale Pink. Now what you'll notice me doing is demonstrating what I just talked about. So you can see how small the dots of paint I'm able to get almost pencil thin. And this is really due to the fact that this paint is incredibly thin and I'm using quite low pressure. So this enables me to go in with that final highlight and really, really focus in on those just very small spots that I wanna get. It's a little bit tricky to kind of get a hand on it, but once you master this technique, your airbrushing is gonna be taken to a whole new level. So just like before, sit back and relax as we watch the rest of this step, or you can skip ahead. All right, so now we're onto our glazing. And if you look at the model, it seems very washed out, very desaturated, doesn't even really look purple. But don't worry, this is where the glazing step comes in and this is the most important step. So for this step, I'm gonna be using Pro Acryl Transparent Purple and this is an incredibly, incredibly strong pigmented paint. So I'm gonna be thinning it about 10 to one with airbrush thinner and transparent paint. And you can see here, even after all that thinning, I'm finding it a little bit thick. So I did a little test on my hand just to see the opacity and I'm finding it's still a little bit heavy. So I'm gonna just add a touch of water and we should be good to go. Now, really, really important here, we're gonna work in a lot of really thin passes, very, very light, multiple coats because we can always add more glaze, but once we've over added, it's really hard to take some away. So just be really slow with this step, back and forth across the model, Nice pressure. You want a slightly higher pressure here because you want the paint to be totally aerosol. So as with before, feel free to watch or skip ahead to the next section. So for this step, we're gonna be doing our armor trim base coating. Now for this, I'm using Peridot Alchemy from Scale 75. And I've added just a touch of water to keep it nice and thin. The Scale 75 Intalics are really, really nice. They do take well to water and a little bit of thinner. 
So make sure you keep it nice and thin, nice sharp brush, and we're gonna kind of go around and paint all the trim. Now this step is totally optional at this point, but you'll see why in the next step, why I like to do it here. It helps me speed up the total painting process. But if you're looking for a slightly different tone of gold, like say you want to do a blue or a green tone to your gold, then I would do this after the next step. And just like before, if you want to watch me do this in high speed, feel free. Otherwise, you can skip ahead to the next step. So at this point, all my gold is base coated, and I'm gonna go in with pure Druchy Violet from Citadel. And I'm gonna use this as both a wash for the gold and a pin wash and kind of black line effect for all the armor panels. So as I mentioned before, because I like a little bit of a purple tone to my gold, I'm able to get a dual use out of this wash step. And the purple tone gives the gold a nice dark tone, and it works as a shading color in the recesses. Now obviously if you wanted a gold with a little bit more blue or a little bit more green, you wouldn't want to also wash your gold at the same time. But I find by picking a wash color for my gold that actually works for my armor, it helps me speed up the whole army painting process. So if I was say doing blue armor, I might do a blue wash. Or green armor, I'd do a green wash. And this way I can basically do two steps into one. All right, so as you can see, our Druchy Violet is all dry and it's left a nice dark layer in between all the recesses and also shaded down the gold. So now in our next step, I'm gonna go with a 50-50 mix of Gene Sear Purple and Pale Pink. And I've thinned these out quite a bit and I'm basically gonna do my first edge highlight. Now this is probably the most time consuming step. Don't worry if you're super messy here or if you overdo it a little bit. We can always go back with our base color, Gene Sear Purple, and kind of glaze in any areas that we over painted so just try to do this carefully obviously you can't do it as fast as the video shows because it's uh, sped up but um, yeah this is a little bit painful but just got to get through it all right so we're in the home stretch here and in this final step we're basically gonna be just going with some pure pale pink and just hitting the very, very tops of all the edges with a little bit of that pale pink. So just be really, really careful. Use a really sharp brush. I apologize for my hair being in the video here a little bit, but uh, hopefully you guys get the idea. And this is kind of the final step. So you can kind of do this as quick or as slow as you want. And I'm just, just doing the very, very highest edges of the corners. So stay tuned and we're gonna see the final model. And that's the purple armor complete. Tune in for a future video where we're gonna finish the rest of the model. Hopefully this was a helpful video and uh, hopefully it was enjoyable. It was my very first one. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the future. Hey guys, don't forget, make sure to like and subscribe the video down below. It's absolutely free, but really helps out the channel. I'm also live streaming on Twitch and YouTube weekly. So three to five times a week. So make sure to check that out. And if you guys want to see kind of other projects and things that I'm working on, check out my Instagram and the links below. Uh, I post all sorts of work in progress, uh, stream schedule, all sorts of other things. So thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you guys later.